Hi everyone, I'm Sienna, the content producer here at Seamwork. Today I'm going to be sharing kind of a project diary slash tutorial for making this sweet pair of leather house shoes. I think this project is a super fun way to shake up your sewing practice or get you in the making groove if your sojo is a little low. Plus, in the end, you'll have some cute house shoes you can wear in your sewing space to keep your feet safe from those stray pins. If you want to follow along and make your own pair, check out the article written by shoe designer Hilary Webb in this month's issue of Seamwork Magazine. In the article, you'll find the full tutorial, sizing info, tools and supplies list, lots of links to resources, and how to access the PDF pattern to make your own pair. To make your house shoes, you'll need sewing needles, leather scissors, or a box cutter. I found it easier to cut out the thicker sole leather with a box cutter, bone folder or fine grit sandpaper for burnishing the edges, a Sharpie, a leather punch. I used this one that I already had on hand, but it makes holes larger than the recommended one millimeter holes, some cardstock for printing the pattern. Regular printer paper works just fine too. It's just a little bit easier to trace around the cardstock, wax thread, cotton thread, upper shoe leather around 1.2 millimeters in thickness, lining. I'm using a really thin leather for this. Eight to nine ounce leather for the soles and optionally some foam sheets which are available with a sticky backing but I just use some double-sided tape. Step one, print and prepare the pattern. Just like a garment sewing pattern, I printed the pattern at 100% scale and cut out in the middle of the printed line. Then I punched out the stitched holes on each piece. Step two, trace and cut the leather. I then traced, cut out, and punched all the necessary pieces. Just like with garment sewing, you'll need to cut out mirror images of each piece so that you make a right and a left shoe. I had two sets of vamps and vamp linings, two sets of soles, including the footbed lining and sole, plus the optional foam layer, and two sets of heels and heel linings. I paired all the pieces together so that the wrong sides are facing each other, and each part is with the correct foot. For the upper and sole pieces, I cut just inside the trace line. For the lining, I cut one to two millimeters away from the drawn line so that the linings won't be seen when I'm wearing the shoes. I found the cutting and the punching to be the most time consuming part of this project, so I highly recommend finding a comfy seat and listening to a podcast or watching something. Step three, stitch the upper. To stitch the heel pieces together, I cut a 31 and a half inch length of cotton thread and stitched together the top edge, the edge without the notches. I found it faster to use two needles rather than to stitch and double back. Once it was stitched, I tied a knot in between the layers and trimmed the excess thread. Next, I attached the vamp to the heel. I really like how the vamp sandwiches the heel pieces here, making it so that the seam doesn't rub against your foot. To sew these pieces together, I cut a 59 inch length of cotton thread and started stitching on the 10th hole from the edge on the medial side of the vamp. I left a tail of thread between the vamp upper and lining, then stitch down toward the heel, capturing the heel piece in between. I worked the stitch line to the last hole, then doubled back and continued stitching in the other direction, filling in the gaps.
Once I was at the eighth hole on the lateral side, I made sure to attach the remaining side of the heel and doubled back again, filling in the stitch line. Once I was back at the start, I tied off and clipped the excess thread. Step four, attach the sole. Next, I layered the sole pieces so that the wrong side of the leather was facing the table. I wanted a little traction and thought the rough side would be best. Then using double-sided tape, I adhered the foam to the sole and layered the lining on top. I cut a 98 inch piece of wax thread and threaded a needle on each end. I lined up the notches of the upper unit to the notches on the sole unit and put a needle through the hole next to the medial heel notch here. Then I pulled the thread so that there were equal lengths on either side and began stitching. I found it easiest to stitch with both needles at once, but you can also stitch with one needle for a few stitches and then catch up with the other needle. I stitched all the way around and pulled tightly at the notches to close them. I tied a few knots and sandwiched them between the layers and trimmed the excess thread. I really enjoyed making these house shoes. It was a fun project with just the right amount of challenge and new skills. I think my pair turned out pretty great and I've been wearing them a lot. I chose this veg tan leather that I think is gonna get that really fun patina with time and wear. I don't love the size of the holes. Again, I was using a tool I already had. So for my next pair, I'll definitely purchase a punch that creates smaller holes to get a more streamlined look. I also want to try out a different lining material too, like a suede, which is what Hillary actually recommends in the article. I ordered all of my materials online and the lining ended up being a little bit more plasticky feeling than I wanted, so I used the wrong side, and I think it turned out pretty good. Thanks for joining me today, and remember to check out Hillary's article in this month's Seamwork magazine. Happy sewing and shoemaking!